Well, come the 70s, a new studio, a new presenter, and it was during this era many changes were made. Colour television, slow motion replays and satellite link-ups were brought in, and the man who had to cope with it all was Frank Boff. Well, thanks very much for watching. Uh, keep it up. Uh, thanks to everybody here on the floor, those upstairs, they're a terrific team. As for me, well, I'm the luckiest man on earth, and it really has been the greatest pleasure. Goodbye. Play the music. This is the railway station that Hull City built. What we want to do now is to introduce you to Uncle Bing. I was saying this is a runner in the next one. Oh, yeah. And uh, you might have a bit on it, you reckon, do you? Is he fancied? Well, he's second favourite. Oh, it? well, he should be a long price. If he can win with, under the burden of that name, he'd have to be a hell of a horse. Yeah. Uncle Bing, well clear. At the line, Uncle Bing wins. Lord Brown got his second place. It's going to be close for third. That's ridiculous. You don't luck, think luck like that shouldn't be allowed. You don't think there's an objection to that? I think that's it? There was a pause in the studio. It was a very well-received victory. Well, thank you. I did manage to get a quid down over here with some of my friends in the press. And you have the secret envelope somewhere, have you? Secreted about your person with the 321? Don't think so. Why is it when you mention Leeds United, a sneer comes into your voice? Not true, madam, not true. There's no time for bias here. I've got my invitation. Oh, oh you've got your invitation. <laughs> well, why don't we read that? <laughs> yes. Well, now, since David Coleman spilt his beer over Max Robertson's trousers, I think we'll have another round, shall we? Come to you, Oh, don't be a classic. You might have a chance of picking me up now. I'm about, what, uh, 13 stone? How would you handle 13 oh, stone? I could do that for you, no, well, <laughs> Look at this, leave it. Oh, I'm happy. How's that? That's it. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Well, thank you I'm losing me. control of this programme. Well, Frank, we've taken you back to this old grandstand studio, but there, Precious Mackenzie, I mean, the things they make presenters do, where was that? Well, that was totally uh, spontaneous. We used to do grandstand from, well, all the grounds at the pitch side. We didn't have a fancy hut or a studio in those days. And I always did grandstand, that was at the Arms Park, um, on the pitch side. It was, it was re really very sort of crude and, and, and rough and ready because we had an old army field telephone box up to the gallery and I would <laughs> it literally had a handle on it and I would wind it and there was the whole of the West Stand offering me oranges and <laughs> asking for autographs while I'm trying to do this program um, and that's what it was and, and Mackenzie just picked me up and uh, you know, uh, there's nothing more. If I picked you up, you'd be really, un you'd look really undignified. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't dream of doing it. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I think my words were, "I'm losing control of this program." <laughs> I was at that particular time. So when you look at us in the studios behind these desks, and you think back yeah. when you were down on those touch lines, yeah, that's but when it was started. It was a terrific decade. I mean, Cliffy said, "What a score! What a decade of sport mm. it was that we've we've just seen." You describe it as a golden era. Well, I wouldn't have done it any other time because when we began, uh, there was telecine, i.e., film. And I've held programmes together where, you know, the film was being cut in bits and stuck together with sellotape and, and biding their time and saying, somebody saying, yes, it's ready, we can go on. And, and you know, we've got another goal from Sunderland, let's, let's pop that in, you know. And a videotape came along, which was a terrific advantage. And then it was a time that decade when you could get people to say, wow, look at that, you know, because suddenly we had colour. I mean, can you imagine and, black and white? And people said, wow, <laughs> colour, you know, this is amazing. Um, and then slow motion was another one. People saying, good heavens, wow again, you know, we can actually see this replayed. Uh, in fact, the first slow motion machine was a terribly ponderous affair and it required 15 seconds for the picture to lock in the frame. So you were given a cue word in your ear and you had to fill for 15 seconds, which is three words a second, if you, if you know about these things. So it's a very long fill a before, long and the single was like that, and then you can go to it. But all those things happened in the 70s and uh, also, it was the time, I think, when, you know, the BBC was laying down the standards of televised sport. It started in the discipline. 60s, and, and, and David started it, uh, and then we, we came along, and there was lots and lots of discipline, yes. I mean, it was sometimes, uh, you, you know, there was lots of shouting, there was lots of swearing, <laughs> there was very little time for humour, actually. Yeah. Uh, the, the sport not was the thing. <laughs> has it not changed? <laughs> not I hope it has. I thought I'm it joking. Might. I'm I, joking. I, I hope it had. And, um, uh, but I think what was happening was that people were saying, we believe that there are certain standards have to be achieved for televised sport, and we are going to lay down those standards. And although we shouted at each other and, and we abused each other, um, in the end, we only had one product, and that was the, you know, the, the, the programme and the quality of the programme and the quality of the sport that we were putting out. Those events, the other thing we had, of course, we had all the events in those days. Mm. There's nothing we didn't have. Yeah. There was a great chum of mine called Dickie Davis on World of Sport, which was on ITV. They had nothing, you know. And, uh, 
I used to do gags with him at conferences, and we'd stand in front of a conference of 400 people, and I'd say, Dickie, you must be feeling very comfortable in front of this audience. He'd say, why do you say that, Frank? I said, well, there are 400 people here. That's just about the, you know, the audience you get on World of Sport. So we had everything, and that was a terrific advantage. You've seen some of them there. And we talked about, I mean, now we're behind desks and that. I mean, you were actually more mobile. It was, it, you were walking around doing all sorts. Yes. Uh, That's why we have you standing in I the know, I way. know, I know. But I'd rather sit and hide my pot belly behind <laughs> a desk now, if you don't mind. But uh, I suppose, well, we weren't that mobile in the sense that um, there was always a cable. Yeah. I mean, you know, miniaturised microphones hadn't really come along. Radio mics were, were quite precious. Um, uh, so you were always lugging stuff around a whole pile because you got <laughs> stuff coming into your ear so you had a line into your ear and then you had a line out of the microphone which also went and was held together by sticky tape and so on. And what do you think, what sort of went wrong? I mean we saw you there with Bing Crosby, that was brilliant though, I bet that was one of your favourite memories. Well it was and he had, uh, he had this, I said a man shouldn't have been born that lucky, <laughs> Uncle Bing and the horse came home. <laughs> Um, but unfortunately, he wasn't quite so lucky the next time I interviewed him for another programme I worked on in, in the 70s called Nationwide. And I went to the Palladium to interview him there, and I interviewed him uh, during the interval of his performance there. And uh, three days later, he died on the golf course. Oh. So uh, I was probably the last person to, to, to interview him, actually. And looking back over those memories, we've seen some of, some of the great yes. moments that you had. Well, has anything sort of gone uh, wrong? Anything you'd like to forget? Um, well, of course, it's the names that, that always let you down. <laughs> where, where do you have your names written? About your person somewhere. Yeah. I bet you've got a, a piece of paper handy. Back there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, this, this race course here, we had a problem once with the studio in London, and there was some industrial dispute in the 70s, and the studio was out of commission, but the OBs were still working. And I started the programme down here, and when the racing... Uh, ran out. Uh, I went up to, I was driven up to London to continue from an, uh, a tennis OB at Wembley. And um, I think it was uh, Tony Gubber who was holding the fort while I was in this car. When I got up there, you know, I, I clapped in and, and there was very little I could hear and the conditions of working were just dreadful. And uh, Tony tried to tell me what I needed to do next. And I was going to run a piece of uh, videotape. And there were two players playing called Smith and Schmidt, right? <laughs> And I was in a tiswas and didn't quite know. And I got the Smith right, but the Schmidt, and I say oh, yeah. it very carefully, um, <laughs> uh, came out entirely the wrong way. Entirely the wrong way. And, and those are like that. It's like saying, and you pause. Um, we're now going over to shit her over in the shot. <laughs> now, I had to say that. Now, you either get, get that right, or you go away and work somewhere else. It's very simple. But 14 years, I bet you look back on it as, as oh, great Oh, great memories. pleasure. Yes, yes, yes. I mean... I did many other things, uh, and I wasn't in, you know, always completely wedded to sport, and I did breakfast time. In fact, I left Grandstand to do breakfast time. Uh, so I, I always had uh, some interest in current affairs and news and that kind of thing. But, oh, yes, yes. I mean, I never, never has a program that I've done, and I've worked all over the place, never has a program been more difficult, <laughs> never, has, never have the standards been higher. And I tell you what, never in my entire experience now of 30-odd uh, years in this business, uh, were the people who worked there uh, so good. I mean, they, they were selected. Uh, Brian Cowgill is here, who is mostly my head of sport, and also Alan Hart, who mm. is here as well. And uh, they chose the best. Uh, sometimes it was a bit brutal, and if you didn't measure up, they, we, we used to say, well, you know, Cowgill will throw you against the wall, and if you stick, <laughs> then you're OK. But if you fall off, you're off, you're out. So, but, but there was that touch of, 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 of uh, severeness about it, but nevertheless, only the best would do. Well, we thoroughly enjoyed it back then. Thanks for sharing the memories, and we'll let you go and uh, make you. up <laughs> with yes. them back there. Thanks, I can have a glass of wine now. <laughs>